It can be hard to get your big idea started, to write the first lines of code for software that will change the world, to hire the team that will make your dream a reality. That's why we built a different cloud, one that's comprehensive without complexity, that gets you up and running in minutes and stays with you every step of the way. Because simpler tools lead to happier developers and happier developers get better results. Build with us, grow with us at DigitalOcean. We're here. We're here. Hello, hello. Welcome to Cloud Chats. What is it? It's April 28th, uh, 2022. And this episode is called Ubuntu 22.04 Power Beams and a CNCF Situation. Next week's May. Oh, shush. <laughs> that can't possibly be true. I refuse to believe that. Show me some facts. I'm in I'm 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 in Amy's camp where it's like, are you sure? <laughs> I see that calendar, but it doesn't feel right. <laughs> we'll be sure next week when we do the live stream. Don't you worry. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome everybody. We're glad to have you here. Um, and we already have uh, Ingen saying, "I'm here first. I'm here first, and I'm from Germany." So hello, Ingen, and we'd like to invite anyone who's watching say hey in the chat. Let us know who you are and where you're watching from. We usually have people from all over the world, which is really cool. Um, I gave a tech talk yesterday and I mean like very, very global uh, when I asked that question, it was very cool. <laughs> it is always really interesting to see. Um, it's, it's the marvel of the internet. It's true, it is. It's amazing. <laughs> or even that Matt, Amy and I can work together because we, you know, Amy and I live maybe like a thousand miles away from each other, but Matt is, uh, you know, on a different continent than us. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, yeah, look, there's some comments rolling in. Excellent. Hello, everybody. Uh, well, uh, before we uh, call out some of those comments, uh, it's time for our Hello World segment. Uh, <laughs> and I'm excited for this question. So the question is, are there more doors? or wheels in the world? Are there more doors or wheels in the world? And I'm going to let you think about that and we'll say hey to some folks. Uh, I yeah, feel no. specifically <laughs> like this is Otto's revenge for the Tomatan thing that I did last <laughs> week before calling out sick. <laughs> yeah, this was a question that Otto uh, came up with. Well, I don't think he came up with it, but he you know, tossed it our way and he had to go to a meeting uh, and couldn't join us today. So, um, all right. Well, we've got uh, Ian is from France. We've got Dennis. Uh, hello. Ooh, Joe from Long Island, New York. LinkedIn user from Atlanta. <laughs> Avnish, one of our regulars. Hello, Blee Baby 4 also a regular. Lalit from India, Leonardo from Chile, Yuri saying hello, Toon Army Captain saying no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Syed from Pakistan, Emmanuel, glad you like Dio products. Welcome to this live stream. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my cats are having a morning, so you might see them running around <laughs> behind me. Okay, and now we got some good... We got some engagement on the question. Are there more doors and wheels in the world? LinkedIn user says wheels definitely. And Tuna Army Captain gets right to it. You have to define door and wheel. I <laughs> I will skip the middle sentence and say, does a hinge contain a wheel? <laughs> I, I get the first sentence there. You know, you have to define it. Get that. That was my first thing, too, when we had to do this question the first time this week. But I don't, and... I don't quite get how Tuna Army Captain got to the other two questions in that sentence. <laughs> um yeah so yeah you kind of have to like define your terms uh so i started thinking about doors and it was like okay i guess like there's a lot of doors where i live um there's closet doors and there's doors to rooms and there's a front door and like anything on a hinge maybe is a door <laughs> um my question was if there is a door frame and the door is next and the door panels next to it is that two doors or one door 
There's a door frame. Say that again. <laughs> if the door frame is empty and the door panel is oh. next to it, oh, so the is that two open. doors or one door? That's one door. <laughs> Well, uh, let's uh, let's consider wheels then. This is where I got tripped up because initially I was like, definitely doors, and then I was like, oh, a lot of things have wheels on it. A lot <laughs> so of was, things have wheels, yeah. Like I have a bike behind me that has two wheels on no it. No doors, like, no doors, but there's doors right next to it, uh, and some doors over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like your closet door is a panel is a panel sliding closet, right? Yeah. So is that four doors or one door? Oh my god, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but I mean, I think the answer actually, this... when 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 you start to think about it, the answer is very obvious, right? It's wheels no. because Lego exists. <laughs> they are the world's largest oh. manufacturer of tires, and they're but not they even for make, actual vehicles. But they also oh. make doors. <laughs> <laughs> They, also they do make also doors. make doors. I I would I would get, bet that Lego makes more wheels than doors. They do. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to. I'm yeah. holding on to my point is what I'm doing. <laughs> but also, um, if you consider a gear a oh, type of wheel, oh, which you can be described as a wheel it, because yeah. it turns and it carries and it ha the only difference is that teeth on it, then it's definitely wheels. <sighs> yeah. No. <laughs> Ingen, Ingen's getting at it, like, trucks, cars, trains, planes, bikes, skateboards, toy cars, stuff in your home, chairs, uh, like, there's a lot of wheels out there. Um, <laughs> um, all right, well. Uh, this no. is definitely a Twitter argument to an ar army well, captain. Yeah, I, I see this being a Twitter argument. What I want is the Reddit thread <clears throat> in it where someone actually goes and, like, does the research, does the maths, figures it out. <laughs> Otto, Otto sent us a thing and I just got <laughs> mad at it. <laughs> Otto did send us an article. I didn't read it, but it was basically All I'm saying is that, that article was written by an auto insurance company. They are a biased source. <laughs> just true. like, what do you mean next week is May? I don't need to believe it right now. <laughs> it's like <laughs> wheels benefit their industry. So of course they said wheels. <laughs> so, did, so did doors. Cars oh. have doors. Oh man, it's mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> But All right. Car, car can operate without doors. It can't operate without wheels. Have you tried? <laughs> I mean, you could turn it on, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's move on because this uh, we spent like ten to fifteen minutes on this, and this our is staff turning into an existential <laughs> argument, which is why I hate this question so much. <laughs> oh, should we jump into the news? Yeah, let's do it. Let's I'm, do it. I'm just saying. Yeah, if it passes, right. To an army captain, if something goes through it, it's a door. <laughs> I disagree, but <laughs> let's move on. Is, this, is a portal a door? Let's okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go to the news. Portals, Here we go. Two doors. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So first, we've got releases, um, and our first release is K9 Mail six dot also, this is my first question. Is this 6.000 or is this German? So it's 6,000. Oh, that's that a good is question. Fair. And that was also a question I had because I read it initially in our notes as K9 male 6,000, like it was a sci fi character. Mm -hmm. it, sounds like a, it sounds like a dog robot. <laughs> Which is the only reason I don't care what the features are on this. I will sign up for this email service just because it sounds like a dog robot. <laughs> right. uh, yeah. So, what have they got? Summary. We I wrote down a summary for all of these this week, so we knew what we we're talking about. Uh, big thing is that notifications were rewritten internally, hmm. um, so they should be a bit better. Uh, and then there's a lot of bug fixes. And the one feature that stood out to me as net new was that you can set reply to addresses. Oh, nice. <clears throat> That's nice. Very cool. Do either of you use K9 Mail? No. But I will sign up for a service. Use K9 like Mail? Dog. Yeah, and it looks like chat. a dog. It looks like <laughs> it, it is. Looks it like must be named after the Doctor Who character, right? Yeah. I yeah. was trying not to say the. But yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a, a, a email client for Android. Well. Oh, no. I'm not going to do that. As a non Android user. I, think I, will. I have an Android, <laughs> and I found that anything that doesn't work directly with the service tends to not be the most friendly, since I have a majority of 
um, Gmail address or Google mm -hmm. Workspace type addresses mm -hmm. that since it's highly optimized for that, anything trying to service that specific service tends to fall on its face on an Android phone. <laughs> I will say not sponsored, not an ad, but Spark mm. is a wonderful email client and it synchronizes your accounts so you don't have to reset them up on every device. That is nice. Mm. That's really nice. All right, let's go on to the next. GitHub private profiles. A very, very short blog post from yes, GitHub here. Yes, I'm um, at the bottom of the page. <laughs> but if you go to your profile settings, there's now a new checkbox if you don't want to show up in GitHub social features. All right, I like this. I just like uh, any option where you can you know, set it to private. <laughs> yeah. So you know, if you want to use GitHub purely for its Git capabilities, um, and not the hub bit. Yeah. Do uh, Amy and Matt, or people in who are watching, do you have, use GitHub for any of the social features? I know I I like my feed actually. I like to go to my GitHub homepage and see what the people I'm following are doing. <laughs> yeah, I've. <sighs> I'm on the fence about GitHub's new For You feed. We've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's quite there yet in terms of what it's recommending, but mm -hmm. the old classic feed I love, just seeing what's happening on the projects and people that I follow. I like yeah. to keep tabs on that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, Ingen says, yes, I love <clears> the feed. <throat> Discover new stuff all the time. <laughs> what about you, Amy? Any GitHub social features you use? I'm not big on the recommendations, but I'm I'm kind of like Matt, where there are a lot of people who I came into the industry with who's like whose profile. It's fun to see what kind of projects that they're doing because they have a lot of side projects, and the projects that I do follow, I like keeping up on what their updates are, and that's a really good feed for um, non-product type news. So oh, they'll yeah, yeah. they'll just release an announcement very specifically about what updates are coming through, mm -hmm. um, kind of like a contextualized um, change log. Um, and you don't have to, and then if you don't want the narrative story around it, then you don't kind of don't have to get it. So that's what I and what, what I enjoy it for. Yeah, so it's like releases and repos. Um, yeah. Do you know I'm a captain to switch social platform halfway through? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Tuna Army Captain's now watching on YouTube. I'm not sure where he was at before. He was on Twitch before, I think. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Good <laughs> eye, Matt. This has I a would... lot of tabs. I would not have noticed that. <laughs> but Tuna Army Captain us. says uh, he uses the GitHub feed to keep track of releases and repos. And Syed says, yep, the social yep. feed is great. So. Cool. Uh, well, if you don't want to be on the feed, you can make yourself private. Uh, I just like, yeah, I like that yeah, option. There you go. So. It's an option. All it's, right. It's good, especially if you're um, just getting your repos and you're starting your programming, mm -hmm. because um, maybe you don't have a lot there that you don't feel like you don't feel comfortable enough to engage with um, GitHub communities. Mm. So I can see, I can definitely see why you would have it. it I kind of wish we had when I started. Yeah, or even like having a second account if you just don't want stuff public. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Want to mess around in private? Uh, you know, uh, that can be nice. <laughs> All right, next up, OpenBSD 7.1. Yeah. Um, big thing here that's right at the top of the page here support for Apple Silicon Macs, so that's your M1 devices. Nice. Um, it's ready for general use. So if you want to put OpenBSD on there, you can. Um, and through that, there's also general improvements to the ARM64 support if you're not M1, but you are on another ARM platform. Um, nice. And then I looked through the entire changelog just out of curiosity. 490 items in their top level changelog. Whoa, look at this. <laughs> no, this is the summary. This isn't even the oh. changelog. Oh, geez. <laughs> That's... All right. So there's a lot of changes. <laughs> oh, a detailed log of changes. Is that the change log? Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Dang. Oh. We. Okay. <laughs> All right. Very cool. 
Many Human open. I yes. Love is a 500 point unsorted list. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, update if you're on OpenBSD, you can. And then one sports there. Excellent. All right, another update. Uh, oh, we'll cookies. Accept, I'll accept those cookies. <laughs> <laughs> What do we have? Canonical Ubuntu uh, 2204 LTS is released. Yep. So as expected, our regular, regularly scheduled LTS release of Ubuntu is here. Um, I'll be honest, this article from Canonical actually didn't really go into any, what didn't feel like any big features, um, mm -hmm. which was interesting while reading through it. Things that stood out to me, uh, if you're running this on a Raspberry Pi 4, Mm -hmm. Ubuntu desktop now works. Oh, nice. Which makes, I guess, you know, getting started a bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a WSL user on Windows, you should be able to directly update. Um, so that'll be seamless for you. Uh, if you're in the enterprise space, there's improved compliance for a lot of different standards, FedRAMP, PCI DSS, that kind of thing, um, and support for confidential computing. All right. Ooh. And whilst we're here, plug. Yes. Uh, DigitalOcean has published a huge number of tutorials uh, if you've been to 2204. So have fun with that. And you yeah, can get you... that at do.co slash Ubuntu 22 04. Okay, do that again. Do slash .co slash Ubuntu, Ubuntu 22 04. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Dash, not slash. Dash, sorry. Uh, slash 04. No, no, dash, hyphen. <laughs> Hyphen. You've got a hyphen. <laughs> I swear I know how to type. <laughs> no, no, you, you had you had you had one slash still. <laughs> Try again. Do yo yo dot co dot slash dot slash Ubuntu Ubuntu dash slash or, or dash hyphen. dash oh twenty two dash okay. dash okay that's cool. Aha. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Oh. Well, uh, let's share that. Um, let's share that link in the chat. Um, I got it. I got it. I'll type it correctly. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. And then just to address this question from Sound Thinking, they asked, "You're streaming this on Twitch, YouTube, and LinkedIn, and Facebook, yeah, and Facebook. We use a platform called Streamyard that allows us to stream to all those different platforms simultaneously, which is pretty cool. Watch so, on uh, all monitors, every monitor, <laughs> have our faces everywhere." <laughs> That's right. You, and I'm sure there's some, uh, you know, there's a little bit of uh, delay on at least some of them. So <laughs> I'm sure it could be very annoying to listen to that. Oh, so. Yeah, I can't imagine that must be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, Ubuntu 2204. And yes, uh, we have uh, updated like all of our uh, DigitalOcean tutorials. Shout out to the tutorial team. They have been working yeah, their tails off of work. <laughs> to get this ready. Yeah. So uh, I think oof. there's oh, that's I think a lot. in total there's 48 tutorials currently published already. Wow. <laughs> wow. So um yes, go dev ed. We love you. Thank you, tutorial team, says Bleeb84. All right. Oh, and question then from DOTV. Any Linux users Ooh. here and what distro do you use? Yes, please drop that in the chat if you Ooh, have yeah. Yeah, do have, we have, have any... a fight about it. <laughs> Open BSD users. <laughs> Please tell us why your very specific um, part, um, partial version is more important than the other partial version. I want to see this argument. <laughs> Amy, Amy just likes to we shouldn't watch be the world burn. I, I, I live on the drama yeah. is what I do. <laughs> All right. Well, we got uh, Close AI is an Ubuntu, ex-Ubuntu user. Bleeb84, Ubuntu, sometimes Debian. There I you use go. WSL. I use the one that came with the terminal. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> Quite often e the easiest option. EPC, Android Ubuntu Kodachi. And then nice. Engen says Alpine. Alpine. Consumers. Yeah. Oh, that's I good. <laughs> so. All right. Shall we do our last, last release? Yeah. This is a cool one. Yes, I'm excited about this one. So uh, this is from the DigitalOcean blog. It's updated API tokens, uh, new management features in partnership with GitHub, secret scanning, prefixes, and more. 
Ooh. Yeah, uh, so the, the, the very simple summary here is that tokens issued by DigitalOcean for the API now have prefixes on them, which make them very identifiable, what they're for, where they came from. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, it means that GitHub's secret scanning feature now works for them. Um, so if yeah. you accidentally drop a GitHub, uh, DigitalOcean token into GitHub, uh, GitHub will automatically revoke it. So you can't Thanks, leak GitHub. The <laughs> <laughs> um, so the prefixes, it looks like I, I'll I'll make this larger. Uh, enhance. So <laughs> enhance, enhance, enhance. Uh, do v1 uh, for the OAuth flow. Doop dop <laughs> v1 <laughs> for personal access tokens that get generated from the cloud control panel, and then door v1 for OAuth refresh tokens. Um, it's I don't know. I just really auth and refresh and panel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there we go. I like the prefixes. Um, it's nice that GitHub will revoke them if you accidentally um, push them up. But um, I don't know. I just like anything where I could be in the wild and be like, aha, it's a digital ocean uh, <laughs> token. Um, yeah. I like and the other really cool thing. You... Sorry. I'll go ahead, Amy. I just like anything that will give me some order in that long string of randomized characters. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, the other cool thing is dates here. Um, so you can look at when the token was last used, and you can also set them to expire automatically now. Um, so improve security. Nice. Mm -hmm. And then also, this is cool, uh, last used at. So... Uh, if you want to know like uh, the timestamp that your token was last used at, uh, you'll be able to check that. Um, so if you th think something suspicious is going on, you can can look at when the token was last used. Yeah. So if you have so. old tokens from the API, uh, go and regenerate them to get the new formats. Absolutely. And shout out to Andrew and his team for um, getting this up and running. Yeah. All That's right. It. We did releases. Woo! Halfway go there. us! Yay! Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, now we get the juicy stuff. <laughs> Drama. <laughs> the news. All right, Elon Musk to acquire Twitter. <laughs> I like how that was out of date an hour after we wrote that down. Yeah. <laughs> I, absolutely. <laughs> this is a this is a continuation of last week's discussion about Twitter. Um, this is via, via PRN from Twitter. Uh, Twitter has entered an agreement to be acquired at last uh, for a total of roughly 44 billion US dollars uh, wow. at $54.20 oh, a share. Whew, that's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that's larger than the GDP of like a lot of countries in the world. <laughs> I like that we're, that we're using it too. You know, deal with Twitter. It's fine. Yep. I don't know what there is. I don't know what more there is to say at this point. Um, Just, it's so exhausting. Everything about this entire um, situation has been exhausting. Oh, I like this question though. Yeah. Blue says, "How much? How many U.S. dollars per Twitter account?" I think that's. Yeah, that we could. <laughs> I, can hear I, almost did, I almost went to my keyboard to do that before he said so how do you how do you know how many Twitter accounts there are? I'm sure that number is available, but yeah. Uh number of Twitter users in millions. <laughs> I'm not sure how accurate this stat is, but according to this website, okay. there's 329 million active users. Wow, that's a lot. So well, that's like ten dollars a user. All right, all right. Um, I'm not sure Musk got a good deal there, really. Yeah, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I'm cu yeah, I'm curious to see how this goes. I guess. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. For anyone that's curious after last week, <laughs> there's the update. <laughs> all right. Next up. Google, Meta, and others will have to explain their algorithms under new European Union legislation. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of very much, I guess, theoretical currently. Um, it's not actually the law yet. It's just a proposed act. Uh -huh. um, but the EU has agreed on broad terms for the Digital Services Act that they're planning. 
Mm -hmm. um, it will include obligations for companies to remove illegal content from platforms um, beyond what's already required of them. Uh, and the big thing that this kind of Verge article talks about here is uh, that it will also require them to start explaining their algorithms to users. Mm. So if their site is primarily a content site and has a recommendation algorithm, the law is going to require that to be explained to the average user. Ooh, that's interesting. What do you all think of that? <laughs> I'm extremely curious how that's going to be enforced or executed because mm -hmm. a lot of their these algorithms, um, not just for content, but really for any type of adaptive application is has some level of fuzziness or um, AI portion as part of it. And how deep do they expect an explanation of how those are? Or is it going to be we put these actions into this box and mm -hmm. this recommendation comes out? Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm with you, Amy. Like, um, I'd like to see you try explaining your algorithm. <laughs> I'd like to see you try is exactly the thought I was having. Yeah. And not in like a mean way, but just like, there's a lot of like things that the human creators, I think, don't know about those, especially yeah, when like AI gets involved. So, and these applications, um, it's, it's not that it's one team, even the, even a specific recommendation system it has mm -hmm. several teams in, in it and they don't always have mm -hmm. insight on what the other team is doing. So what level are they looking at, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if this gets passed, maybe we'll have a new job in the tech field, which is like algorithm explainer. <laughs> it's like a yeah, subset no. of developer advocacy. I, I <laughs> love the idea of this mm -hmm. act. I just don't get how it's going to be practical. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah, there's other interesting things, actually, is like sub bullet points to this act. Um, there's going to be rules protecting against dark patterns in UI. Ah, oh, I see. So that. kind of like you know when people hide the unsubscribe button, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to be illegal under this. Um, mm -hmm. And there's also some rules around targeted advertising. Um, mm. So yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, how does that get enforced? Um, I wonder. Sam in, in, in the, YouTube in the same says. Way, well, everyone will need to become algo experts. And I just had a really hard kind of um, visceral reaction to my um, intro to um, data structures and algorithms class. And there's a path that I don't want to go on again in my <laughs> lifetime. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, I think two my army captain is also getting at something saying like, um, like medical informed consent, like you can get all the information, but you might not have like the the knowledge if you're not a mm -hmm. trained medical professional to fully understand it. So, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I say to your point about enforcement, I imagine this will enforced kind of similar to GDPR, where a lot of people don't worry about it, but those few big companies will get bitten by it if they mess around. I see. Yeah, that makes sense. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> All so right, let's like seatbelt law where they won't give you a ticket if you're not wearing a seatbelt, but if you get pulled over, you will also get a seatbelt ticket. Yes, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Next up is <clears throat> EDQ sort. So this kind of arguably should have been releases. I didn't know where to put it. <laughs> um, but Go has switched sorting algorithm. The oh, one that I'd never heard of before. <laughs> All right, PD, PDQ sort is explained here. Yeah, Let's so take a look -see. this is a, it's called pattern defeating quick sort. I'll be honest, I have not read into how it works. Um, it's a twenty-page PDF. I mean, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like the abstract Stop though. Sending me to school, guys. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a new solution for the Dutch national flag problem is proposed, requiring no three-way comparisons, which gives Quicksort a proper worst-case runtime of O of N K. Ooh, I don't know what O of N K is. What's, What's the, the K? Dutch national flag problem? So, <laughs> so N is total elements, and then mm -hmm. I guess it says here K is distinct elements. So, oh, thank you, man. This assumes duplicates are in there. Okay. Um. But um, right. um, it's interesting that it's saying a proper worst case runtime, which means they've better defined the space. Mm. 
All right. Well, if you are into this, which is cool, read this paper. <laughs> I love Roller's comment. Only 20 pages. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. This actually is a good illustration of what we were just talking about. How yep. do you explain an algorithm? <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I saw the first five lines of that um of that gist and I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. How the, common uh, is it for programming languages to change like underlying algorithms like this? <laughs> um very rare because when you change it, it also changes not just the performance but the behavior of yeah. your base language. Mm -hmm. So um something similar happened between PHP 4.7 and PHP 5, that they changed the under the underlying structure of how a lot of things work. And um, I was I was working somewhere when we when the infra team did not alert the applications team mm -hmm. that they had made that update and broke the entire stack. No, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, yeah, this is this depending on how it handles behaviors and how many workarounds were built on top of the previous uh, behaviors, it could be a breaking change. Mm -hmm. yeah. That said, did not read that thing, so I'm not sure. Well, I think yeah, Go well, goes in like... gone from quick sort to quick sort, so... Mm -hmm. Okay. It's just an improved version of quick sort, and the first two points here in the commit kind of go, it's not really any slower, and it's quite a bit faster sometimes. Mm. So it seems like a lot of thought has been put into this to make it not breaking. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I also think Go is just in a really unique position in terms of its age and its um, like users to be able to do things like this. Like, Amy, mm -hmm. you were talking about uh, PHP making a change. Yeah. Um, and this like that's a much older good. language, like much more entrenched. Yeah. And like, I think a lot of users aren't maybe super concerned with the underlying mechanisms of the language, but I feel like Go is young enough and like has a lot of people who are really interested in language development that use it, that mm -hmm. it's like, it's right in the zone where um, this kind of change is possible. Right. Um, I think it, it did change at precisely the right time for it because it's a growing language where you need those performance enhancements, but also the ones maintaining Go-based applications are mm -hmm. not newer engineers. They're probably more seasoned engineers who can do the proper testing and make sure that everything's done right. And it looks like Golang went a really proper route of making sure every, like the areas where it would break are that surface area is very minimalized. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So I love also that in the commit message is all the test runs. Oh, cool. They're just there. Um, is it this? Is, yeah. is this, this what you're referring to? I am, yeah. So this yeah, is old time, new time Delta. Okay. Dang, look at this one. There's some some big percentages in here. Yeah, so there's a few that have got a tiny bit slower, um, as the commit kind of mentioned, but mm -hmm. those are some significant reductions in certain cases. Nice. Yeah, that's huge. Um well, and I just noticed this that uh this change was inspired by the C++ and Rust implementation of PDQ sort. So Yeah, I'll say, I think neither of those are kind of like core implementations. Um, they're both kind of packages. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, Go's going for putting it in the core. All right, go, go. Uh, let's move on. Next up, Google donates Istio service mesh to the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Um, all right. Another so, single pixel to add to the landscape. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you get one more pixel. Uh, so Istio is a service mesh for Kubernetes. Um, and I'm honestly surprised it wasn't part of the CNCF already. Um, but Google's had donating it. <laughs> Say that again, Amy. I had assumed it was. Yeah. Uh, same with Knative. Knative, Google just donated Knative to the CNCF. So it seems like they're... Uh, have changed their tune um, about some of these big projects that they shepherd. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I assume it'll be incubating. Um, and uh, yeah, um, CNCF reigns, uh, looms large in this in the cloud native uh, technology space. <laughs> so 
Um, all right. Well, shall we go on to another yeah, CMCF that, story? There was, not, there was not much to say on that one, but it was a, a good lead into the next one. Um, so for some context, the reason, you know, people... Were, so Istio announced that on Friday. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't the greatest timing. Um, <laughs> because in the last couple of days prior to that, uh, the CNCF was involved in a bit of drama on Twitter. That's right. Uh, and this is a good what? summary. <laughs> so Jerome, who's a Kubernetes, like, I think he's a CNCF ambassador and like really involved in the Kubernetes community has this great uh, thread describing what happened. So last Friday, uh, the CNCF sent an email saying, uh, hello, those of you who are attending KubeCon EU, masks are not required. Um, and uh, 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 Jerome lays it out really well. Basically like, uh, a lot of people were were taken by surprise by that, including CNCF ambassadors who often uh, like are a team where the CNCF runs communications by them before it goes out. Um, and uh, KubeCon EU is in like three weeks. So if you are someone who uh, needs to be there uh, and have masks enforced, uh, like it's hard to change your flights and hotels and all that. I will say um, actually to add to that point, I don't think really gets flagged here. A prior version of the KubeCon website very clearly stated that any change would have a month's notice. Ooh, I didn't know that. <laughs> and uh, that sentence miraculously disappeared at the same point the mask requirement disappeared. <laughs> Whoa. Well, um, so, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, the CNCF got called out on Twitter by some high-profile uh, Kubernetes contributors like Kat Cosgrove. Um, and then... Uh, and then somebody using the official CNCF Twitter account uh, accused Cat of violating the code of conduct, um, and uh, it didn't go well. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then I do want to just say Jerome has this great comment uh, in the last few messages of his thread, which are, so when we have outages as uh, technologists, we do like postmortems and we talk about what went well and what didn't, and then like release a blog describing what happened and how that we addressed it. And he's basically saying like, it would be really nice if the CNCF uh, would consider this an incident and then do some analysis uh, like that. Um, and so I appreciated uh, yeah. that particular take i'll so. say if it, uh, it's, it's not just like one thing at this point there's multiple things you know mm -hmm. why did this announcement in the first place go out without talking to people but then why did someone on a friday evening have access to the cncf account <laughs> to start accusing people um and then why were those just deleted and nothing more has been Never said addressed no again. apology no acknowledgement nothing they just got yeah. deleted yeah um so, yeah. and, and then uh, yesterday, this was the uh, blog post from the CNCF, um, which, you know, it's an acknowledgement, but it's pretty, pretty. I, I want to point out that we've had three blog posts that were two or three sentences, maybe. And mm. one announcement that was that included a 20 page white oh, yeah. paper. <laughs> hey, if I could write three sentence blog posts for all my DigitalOcean blogs, oh, that I would, would be great. I would write I a lot more blog so posts. <laughs> I'll just like to point out well, the, the 20 page PDF here wasn't even part of like a blog post. It was just linked in a commit. <laughs> By the way, uh, read this. Yeah. It's 20 pages of math. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, I guess this story is still in progress. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really so. curious because DigitalOcean specifically is engaged in a lot of conferences. Um, as the year goes on, how this is going to affect all the ones that are still uh, that still have an in-person element to them. That's um, a great question. So, like, I'm going to KubeCon EU, um, and DigitalOcean is not sponsoring that, but DigitalOcean is sponsoring uh, Open Source Summit in Austin, Texas, which is a Linux Foundation, or I don't know, I don't know if it's CNCF or Linux Foundation, but same governing board. Linux Foundation. Um, yeah, Linux Foundation. So, um, yeah, I'm assuming, uh, you know, they're they're related, and uh, yeah, curious about that. <laughs> Oh, Amy's also going to that because Amy got a workshop. We're both going to oh, it. Both going to that because we you both can are see us. Workshop. 
with a respectable social distance, but still in person. <laughs> Just <laughs> over there. Over there, please. And hopefully with masks. We'll find out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's so tricky right now. Um, I actually, I went to a concert last night and uh, in Denver, Colorado, in the USA where I live, there's no more indoor mask mandate. Um, but I wore a mask because I want to go to KubeCon EU in a couple of weeks and mm -hmm. I don't want to get COVID and be like, oh, I got to cancel this cool conference trip I was going on. Um, so yeah, COVID once again makes things complicated. Um, so, oh. <laughs> Yes, Ingen says, cool, can't wait to socially distance see you. Yes, I would love to meet you in person, Ingen. Um, so, all right, any other final thoughts on the CNCF situation? <laughs> no, just want to, looking forward to seeing some more communication come out of this. Um, Absolutely. So it's an ongoing story. I bet we'll this talk a, about this next week. <laughs> this is a general rule, especially dealing with um, either really chart, if you're really passionate about something, not to say the first thing you you want to say, say the third thing you want to say. Um, <clears throat> I actually think it, I heard it off of some kind of relationship podcast, but it keeps you one from having a knee jerk reaction and two saying something that you've had a chance to think about, but you're still angry about. And then you can eventually, by the third time you get to your third statement, you've allowed yourself to kind of think how you, what you're going to say is going to be accepted, mm -hmm. even if you're not like fully empathizing with the other person. So that maybe you don't call tweet on a Friday night thinking that you could do hard call outs from an official Twitter account. Yeah, I was telling the team before we started streaming, like I saw this starting to unfold last Friday on Twitter. And I was like, I don't have anything to contribute to it right now. Uh, and it's really interesting, but I have some work to get done. So I'm just going to close Twitter till Monday because I'm sure things will change over the weekend. Um, and to be uh, fair, they did change. They did change. <laughs> Not <laughs> sure for now, the better, but <laughs> Matt's now keeping me abreast of yeah. what's going on. But I, I think you know, you're raising a point, which is, uh, you know, don't go and get involved in this. Um, stay out of it just let it happen at this point um don't go after any people involved in it yeah because there right. have been some people going after people and it's not nice to see yeah um all right uh we'll we'll revisit this next week but now the u.s oh, navy wirelessly that. beams 1.6 right. kilowatts of power a kilometer using microwaves what whoa <laughs> I fully got distracted by the ad. I'm going to be honest with you. Oh, look at DigitalOcean ad. <laughs> <laughs> I get a lot of targeted ads from DigitalOcean. I can't imagine why. <laughs> it's not like I'm on uh, the DigitalOcean domain all day long, <laughs> every day. <laughs> oh. But anyway. <laughs> Sorry. It's like once when Netflix tries to recommend me a movie I've seen 20 times. You seem to really like to watch this movie. Would you like to watch it again? again? It's like, no. <laughs> I mean, at least stop. Netflix knows I don't like watching new things. It's like, do you want to watch New Girl again? And I'm like, sure, let's do it. <laughs> do you really like this one episode? Let's just go watch it again. Okay, I guess. Ooh, Nikola Tesla, eat your heart out, says Tune Army Captain. Okay, so wait, we're transmitting power, like electricity through microwaves? Yep. I don't, oh my God, I don't That's really know. That's not even my question. Means. Where are they sending it? I, where's the target? <laughs> From one dish to another dish. Excellent. All I'm right. Sure about that, though, right? I need more. This oh, is not a, a like a deflector dish situation. We're just shooting power at a thing. Oh, it is two locations. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, we're not just blasting power into the atmosphere. I, I, I don't know. I didn't <laughs> see it. <laughs> Ooh, this looks like the, uh, this looks like, I don't know if you saw WandaVision. This looks like the outside of Wanda's, uh, Wanda's oh, like West the universe Story? that she's oh, created. <laughs> um, this looks like a kind of thing that'll happen there. All right. Well, there's this video, microwave power beaming. This is, it's not upsetting. I'm just, I never thought about it. And I don't know. It's, it's like mind blowing in a way that I'm like, I just need, I need a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I think it, it's one of those technologies that we know works. It's just about making it efficient. Mm. 
Um, Scope M, it looks like, is like the protocol name. Yeah, and supposedly this was, you know, I've, I've, I don't know this stuff, um, but it's being described as the most significant demonstration of its kind in half a century. Wow. How does this not affect air currents? I got to go read something later. <laughs> All right, Matt, way to make me and Amy upset. Oh, by I'm adding you this. something interesting to look at. This isn't upsetting, but also very upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> Amy and I now will be thinking about this all day. <laughs> it's like, where is it going? And What's then happening? this last news item. Space news, got to have it. Space news. Go for it, Matt. Space news. Yep. Uh, so Crew Dragon Freedom news. arrived at the International Space Station last night. Um, it's the first time that this Crew Dragon capsule has arrived there uh, and brought with it the astronauts of the Crew 4 mission. Cool. So they are now on board the International Space Station. This was... Um, I think the shortest time from launch to docking oh, wow. of a Crew Dragon so far, like 16 Amazing. hours. Wow. Ridiculously fast. Dang, that is fast. So yeah, huh. it took off from Kennedy Space Center yesterday and arrived last night. Amazing. Wow. All right. Cool. Well, so there you go. Space news update. Um, so that's... Crew 3 leaves quite soon as well. Um, it's kind of, we're in the transition period. Handing over. All right. Well, that's the news. <laughs> that's it. We did news. This is a lot of news. It was good, though. All right. Let me stop sharing my screen. Oh, uh, two it's army captain my asking. turn. I forgot. Hey, I, I was going to two army captain asked in chat. Soyuz does three hours. Right? I'll be honest with you. I don't actually know how fast Soyuz is. But it wouldn't surprise me if it's faster because it launches from a more optimal location. Uh, but I don't know how fast it actually is. Amazing. All right. Well, it's game what's time. next? It's game time. Game time. <laughs> I'm getting to it. <laughs> okay. Best bit okay. Of the show. Mm hmm. I'm waiting for the moment where Amy goes, I've got to restart Chrome again. <laughs> no, I did. It's doing it this time. Don't jinx it. Why would you say that? <laughs> oh, yesterday I was giving a tech talk and you know, can't you have, access your screen. No, <laughs> you have a lot of windows open and I managed to, uh, you know, use the browser back button in my stream yard window. So I took oh. myself right out of the top. <laughs> I blame Matt. Everything was working fine before uh, you said it. Oh, oh does it, you actually need to do it? Oh, wonderful. I can share. I can. I got uh, it. It's oh, you got fine. it. Well, while we wait, we can play some music. No, I Is can't. This... It, it suddenly can't access my screen at all. Why? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Netflix. listen to this music. <laughs> StreamYard selection of music is bizarre. It is weird. <laughs> Rights free music, man. You get what you get. <laughs> sometimes it's really great, sometimes it's weird. <laughs> oh. Amy, do you need one of us to pull up the Kahoot? Yes, maybe. All right, I got you. Um, why would we do word I of the tried. Week? Why don't we do word of the week while I pull up a Kahoot? Because it'll take. Let's yes, do I'll do that. Week. That's a thing I'm prepared to do. <laughs> All right. Okay. Hang on. Are we ready? For... The overlay is not going to work very well in this situation, but that's all right. There's the overlay. <laughs> no, it's working very well. It's fine. <laughs> Enjoy the overlay. The word is holoportation. I'm now going to remove the overlay so you can see us. <laughs> okay, holoportation. I'm excited. <laughs> I deleted the notes, guys. Okay, well, <laughs> I don't remember the thing I wrote down specifically for this. Do you want but me to read I know it? what I can it read does. it. So it's fine. No, no, Google Meet. What are you doing? Oh, God, everything's working against me now. Why this is only happening to me? Because <laughs> you're streaming. It's because people are watching. Everything. And it knows it's like, do you want five apps open now? Great. <laughs> um, so recently, um, uh, NASA beamed a doctor into space using um, both uh, holographic projection and data streaming. So it's basic, basically the combination of those two technologies, which is fascinating. Uh, um, that The word makes more sense now. Yes. 
and it is very much related to the technology of the EMF, except it was an actual real person um, <laughs> that they beamed into space in order to do medical examinations on the uh, um, astronauts on the station. So I am going to go find all of that information. That uh, is... Yeah. What? How did I not hear about that? This is just as like unsettling and amazing as the Oh no, now microwave. what happened? <laughs> how how did this 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 episode was going so well? What happened? <laughs> well, I have the Kahoot up and ready. Um so uh, let's get that up on the screen and then we'll we can talk more about holoportation. All right. I'm, so. my brain is not it doesn't know what to feel about holoportation. <laughs> I mean, Matt, would you let us see your face if uh, holoportation was a was an option? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay, here it is. Holoportation is a type of capture technology that allows high quality 3D models of people to be reconstructed, compressed, and transmitted live anywhere in real time. When combined with mixed reality displays such as HoloLens, it allows their users to see, hear, and interact with remote participants in 3D as if they were actually present in the same physical space. Holoportation has been in use since 2016 by Microsoft, but this is the first time um, it has been in use in an extreme and remote environment such as space. Wow. There. Amazing. I did so write it, it it's, down. it's literally the intersection of holograms and teleportation. Wow. That's that's wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the break the thing that makes it a teleportation is the breaking down of the image in order to reconstruct it, as wow. opposed to just sending a data stream of something that already exists. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that must be pretty intense, right? <laughs> it seems like it. There's a lot of data yeah, involved. I mean, in it a doesn't 3D model. sound great. <laughs> Well, we already have seven people who have joined, but uh, we would love for you to play this Kahoot quiz with us. So if you go to Kahoot IT and enter the game pen 620-8730, or you can use that QR code up at the top. Um, yeah, please join us. And uh, we have prizes for the winner. Um, and uh, Amy, do you want me to ask and answer the questions or do you still want to do that? I can do that. Okay. Um... I'm also, if you were here last week, does. tell me how you enjoyed my tomato robot. <laughs> 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 so let's get this quiz started. There's less nightmares in this, from what I understand. Few, fewer nightmares. Fewer Otto nightmares. made this quiz. Otto got pulled into a very important meeting before this episode. So very important. He can't he's a us. very important person, but he still yeah. hangs out with us. That's true. <laughs> All right, here we go. What is the original length of a mat? What is the original max length of a tweet? It's in front of me and I couldn't read it. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, 160, 120, 140, or 280 characters. All right. And Looks we know like, the backstory to this one. Isn't it something with like a number of bytes? <laughs> Although it's because you used to be able to text in your tweets. Yeah. Oh, I didn't and know that. And it's a character limit for SMS. Okay, that's really interesting. <laughs> ah, Believe84 knew this. Same as SMS. So you were able to SMS the tweet. There you oh, go. Cool. SMS, our favorite, my favorite protocol. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up. Oh. Oh, there we go. Space Lark. I feel like the UI has changed for the leaderboard. Um, it does feel like that. It's got wider and bolder. Yeah. Space Lark, number one. Amazing Alpaca, number two. Smooth Haven't Griffin, number all? three. Matt, would you like to uh, oh, issue your thing. disclaimer? <laughs> of course. Kahoot is not just about getting it correct. It's about being fast. People have different numbers of points because they were faster to click the correct answer. So there's the thing. Press the button fast, but still get it right. And accuracy. Here we go. Next up. Who wrote the first computer algorithm? Charles Babbage, Alan Tur Turning, <laughs> Ada Lovelace, or Grace Hopper. <laughs> this is love me a typo. <laughs> Alan Turing. 
we can only roast the typos one if they're <laughs> really bad but also if they're here ah so uh the majority of people voted for charles babbage but the real answer was ada lovelace the first computer algorithm was written by a woman and the daughter of lord byron that's right she has her own Our... special day in which a lot of women technologists publish their uh, um publish things for a 50-hour period oh that's cool i didn't know about it all this lovelace day is super cool we should do yeah. something for it I'll talk we to you should. Later. Okay. Space <laughs> Lark still in the first slot. Epic Deer moving up and Flying Owl in third place. Next question. Nicholas Tes uh, Nikola Tesla <laughs> built an early experimental wireless. Oh, God. Transmission station. What was it called? Ooh. Warden, Warden Cliff Tower. Cliff. Bell Tower. 65 watt or Solar City? <laughs> The first Solar one sounds, City. <laughs> sounds, the first one sounds like a Harry Potter thing. It does. <laughs> Warden Cliff Tower. Sounds know. British. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. The correct answer, apparently. Matt, do you know anything about it Warden Cliff Tower? sounds surprisingly British. I'm going to have to Google it now. <laughs> Hold your horses. Where was Tesla it? British? Nicholas Tesla worked out of the United States, though, didn't he? Because oh, yeah. he was in yeah, computational in... medicine. So that, Warden, that's a Warden, word that exists here. Yeah. Wardenclyff Tower is in Long Island. Oh. All right. We had Where you expect all of the super British from, words, I guess. We had, some, we had a viewer from Long Island. So if you know anything about Wardenclyff Tower, let us know. Um, Especially right. if there's a tour that they'll, they will, they're willing to bring us through. <laughs> uh, if you want us to do us on the on-site episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. Amazing <laughs> alpaca and epic deer. <clears throat> mm. Which Ooh. of the following is not a Linux distro? Oh boy. Samakia, Slackware, Ubuntu, or Fedora? I, I don't think I said that first one right. That I mean, sound right. it's fine. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, so good. the real, real answer is Samachia. Um, Got the majority of people. Um, all right, we all knew Ubuntu and Fedora <laughs> are actually yeah. Linux and, distros. And then, and then I gave up. <laughs> Slackware. Anybody know anything about Slackware? We talked about it on the show before, I think. Um, I'm sure we have, but <laughs> I, I don't know what's special about it. It's a Linux distro. All right, we'll <laughs> leave it at that. <laughs> wow, Space Lark still on top. Epic Deer and Amazon Urchin. What happens? Ooh, if I and click running on that? away with it. Look at that. Hey, uh, if you click on it, it bans them. Oh shoot! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Whoever luckily, I just banned. Luckily, you banned me. So I just break it <laughs> okay. That's Please, like it. Don't click anything no else. Next button. Next button. I banned someone else. If I banned you, uh, I'll Please share so. at the end and I will send you bad. some apologies, swag. I'm really sorry. <laughs> oh Ooh, Please how far? Hard. How far is the farthest <laughs> spacecraft from Earth? 17.5 wow. billion miles, 12.82 billion miles, 14.46 billion miles, or 2.01 trillion miles. I appreciate that someone, whoever wrote this, put the tilde to go approximately and still did two decimal places. <laughs> That's a big number. So the answer is 14.46 billion i got the um, first three right and then that's it <laughs> <laughs> then it just started to fall off you know, all right <laughs> approximately 14.46 who bans from a leaderboard that doesn't make any sense well yeah you, when you hover over it, it it does the strikeout but uh i thought that uh, was just that this is something <laughs> you were pointing to who if you're listening because we've given you product feedback before <laughs> Add a yeah, confirmation please, dialogue. Please send there, us please. your uh, your spreadsheet for the bug for the um, bug submission, <laughs> and we will do so. Yeah, we'll fill <laughs> out a Jira ticket for you. Uh, believe it agrees <laughs> with us. This is not the best way to ban. Uh, but Space Lark is still in first. Amazing Alpaca and Inspired Rabbits in third. Uh, all right, next up. Oh, ooh, I'm not sure I know this one. What, what is, is the Go Lang <laughs> Go Lang mascot's name? Rob. Gopher, David, or doesn't have one. Rob. I didn't. Read. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, I I'm gonna go Rob. <laughs> name. It can't be Gopher. Doesn't have one. 
What? They didn't name their mascot? What? Nope. No. He's just that the Golang Gopher. Right. Yeah, he's just the Golang Gopher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Don't well, like no that. one got that right. So the leaderboard New remains contest. Everyone the same. in chat, please name the Gopher. <laughs> Go and tweet at the Go account on Twitter. Tell them the name. <laughs> Ooh, this is a good one. What are the three parts of a JSON web token? <laughs> Header body encryption. Ooh. Sorry, Amy, I took over your job. Metadata no, data okay. verification, top, middle, bottom, header payload signature. I saw the the letters and my brain stopped, so thank you for doing <laughs> that. <laughs> All right. Header payload signature was the correct answer. Yep. Whenever I see a key on a screen, it means, oh my God, I published something. What oh. did I do? And I get, I like, <laughs> inside you go, punk. That's not a bad, uh, that's like a good, I think, reaction to have. <laughs> yeah. if you want a that very means quick, something bad happened. And they, if you want a very, very quick interlude, uh, jwt.io explains yeah. that really, really well. Jwt.io. Thanks. And if you scroll down very slightly, Oh, it's <laughs> that's a where that came from. Thing. Oh, that's nice. I like Fine. it. Yes, uh, formatted yeah. is nice. There you go. All right, excellent. Next up, <coughs> which is the following is not a revision or version control software. Mercurial, Git, Save As, or Subversion. That depends on where you're working. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's just say one of those I stopped using. More recently than I should have. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who probably should have known better, and yet. Save as is not a revision version control software. Depends um, on how you use it. I would just like to point out, actually, like in modern Microsoft Word, for example, it is. <laughs> and it is in Google Docs as well. Yeah. All right. If you, it'll version it automatically now. So we've come yeah. full circle because they apparently you can't trust anyone to not use it. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We've got um, Space Lark, Amazing Alpaca, and Wise Elephant coming up. Two more up. questions to go. Yes. Hmm. That's not. <laughs> is it generally cheaper to scale horizontally? That or is. I'm going to start if I without it later. <laughs> Controversial question. This is opinionated. Excuse me. <laughs> Let's see what the correct answer is according to Otto. <laughs> according to Otto. Ah, according to Otto, horizontally. So well, that would be that like... depends on what your thing is, doesn't yeah. it? So that would yeah. be like, if you have like VMs running, you would add more VMs. That's Yeah, horizontal. but if you only have to add memory to one, uh -huh. instead of spinning up another one of the same thing, what's... Yeah. Otto. Terrible question. How... Ooh, Otto. This, again, revenge for the tomato robot. <laughs> yeah. I feel like a lot of this... <laughs> Uh, wait, but a lot of people got the answer right, so I don't know. Maybe that's something. It's opinionated. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm salty about it. <laughs> Ooh, final oh. question. In JavaScript, what type is NAN? Undefined, I'm upset null, by this. object, or number? <laughs> I'm going to say a number, because I've only gotten three right so far, and one of them I want to argue. <laughs> All I'm saying is that if you there is a certain there is a certain period of time where you can do vert, vertical scaling in a very efficient way because you did not have a horizontal scaling option. All right. This, the solution was to throw throw hardware at the problem. There, and if you've done that before, I don't feel like I've encountered a lot of vertical scaling in my career. Um, you know, really just started like five years ago, but all been horizontal scaling. But the question of is NAN, what what type is NAN in JavaScript? It's a number. Ah! <laughs> Welcome to JavaScript. <laughs> when Not JavaScript gets deal. into this area, that's where I'm like, uh. <laughs> yeah. there we go. There we go. <clears throat> all right. Which makes it well, very painful because you can't use type of to tell if you've actually got a number. There is a dedicated global function to tell you where the NAN 
whether a number is noun or not. That's not how words work, man. <laughs> well, Space Lark is number one. Amazing Alpaca is number two. Kind Deer, number three. Thank you all for playing. If you are one of the people who I uh, banned, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can email me. Chris and drops in. one comment. It's the entire thing. <laughs> oh, hi, email me at digitalocean.com. Tell me I banned you and I will send you some apology swag. And then Space Lark. Um, is that Tsunami Captain? I think it is. Tsunami Captain, is this you? Please confirm. You have to tell us if it's you. <laughs> I'm waiting. No, you, I mean, there's. Nothing. Tsunami well, Captain, please say no if it's not you as well. If Space Lark is not Tsunami Captain, uh, you can also just email me and I'll get you some swag. That way Matt doesn't have to do it this week. So, uh, All right, send so I'll send you... If it is Tsunami Captain, I'll send you the okay. list of... Oh, it is. It is. There you go. <laughs> the amazing oh. alpaca, yeah. same thing. <laughs> yeah. Bleeb, feel free to email as well. Yeah. Um, email me, Bleeb84, and we'll, there we go. we'll get you set up. So. Tsunami Captain... I don't know what I'm sending you. To an army captain. Chris, email me, and I will send you once again apology swag. <laughs> because... <laughs> because you banned. I'm happy. I'm second because you banned the other second. <laughs> so, um... yeah, Chris will, Chris will then also loop you into the email to Kahoot with the UI complaint. <laughs> I like Roller's comment. You should ban Toon Army Captain for winning too much. <laughs> Toon Army Captain, I think, Toon Army Captain and Ingen are our most devo devoted uh, uh, viewers. Yes, definitely. <laughs> so. Toon Army Captain is single-handed the reason that our swag store is running low on stock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, that was the Kahoot quiz. Uh, what's next? What's uh, it is, what's on your mind? Cloud right. chance therapy. Now, now we can uh, use some music for this. <laughs> Maybe not rock. <laughs> I will not use the rock <laughs> song. This one's called daydreaming. Nope, I use I now. use this one for my live streams a lot. <clears throat> um, uh, nice. Matt, do you do you still go first? I can. <laughs> I've actually written something down this week. Oh, okay. Well, then uh, I nominate you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> So if you follow me on Twitter, you'll have seen this exact tweet already. Um, but I achieved this week Docker Compose in Docker, in Docker, in Docker. I, I don't like that sentence. <laughs> it's Docker all the way down. Yeah. Um, oh, God. So there is, there is more context to this, which is... Uh, I would hope within, so. <laughs> yeah. Within our repo, we use Docker Compose for some database stuff. <laughs> and we want to, and we want a Docker file image that can just run our repo. Mm. So that's one level of Docker in Docker, which is fine. You know, Docker in Docker exists. It's sometimes fine to use it when you have the right conditions. And needing Docker Compose is a good enough reason. Where it gets complicated is that this then gets run in concourse. So Ooh. our Docker file, which is Docker in Docker. <laughs> runs as a concourse task which uses another docker in docker image and then concourse itself is obviously running docker to run that task so we end up with docker compose inside three layers of docker well i gotta say it's making for some good jokes didn't <laughs> deception <laughs> d and d and d and d <laughs> um but uh, yeah, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, it, it took like a whole day to get it working. <laughs> I believe that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, and Toonami Captain asks, is it more complicated than it sounds just installing Docker? It's not too much more complicated. Um, Docker publish an official Docker image that lets you run Docker in Docker. Um, it requires some small tweaks to how Docker behaves um, and the container has to be privileged because mm. it needs host access. But yeah, you can actually, someone has also then taken the Docker image of Docker and Docker and written a command to chain it infinitely. Wow. So you can go as far as your system will let you, basically. So there you go. That's what's on my mind. I mean, lots I've... of people do that on accident. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's the use case of doing it on purpose, which is which is. It feels very bad. Very it feels bad. Oh, new login from Cambodia too. So welcome. Oh, hello. Even if yes. Can. <laughs> well, uh, Amy, what's on your mind this week? Thank you, Matt. <clears throat> we talked about this before that you and I will be at Open Source Summit, and um, I had mentioned that. I'll I'll do my presentation and I'll do all the events and then I'm spending the rest of the time outside because after everything that happened with the CNCF, I don't know how comfortable I am with people. So I was wondering how to do um, engagement stuff that is outside. I proposed some kind of cloud chats picnics. <laughs> Ooh, I like that idea. So yeah, I mean... If anyone has ideas on how to, even if it's not at a conference where you you can have a bunch of people doing this, it's like, how do you guys get together to talk about tangential computer stuff um, these days? Now that meetups are are difficult, even if like everyone's on a different level of um, a different a different level of, com of mass compliance, I guess. Um, and how do you guys... Cloud LARP. Yes, thank you. Don't tempt me because I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. Ooh, cloud kites. That sounds fun. All right, I like that. That actually sounds good. So, Amy, it sounds like you're wondering how do you get the hallway track experience without yeah. being indoors in the hallway at a conference? Right. It's like, how uh. do you do all of that without... Um, I know serverless, serverless has the serverless community has an event in Berkeley at some point this summer mm -hmm. called um, Serverless in the Park. Oh, I don't want to cool. be outside all day. Um, it's just like if you want, if you just want to have a hang, or it's like to talk about this sort of thing, even if it's in a smaller community, even if it's I live out in the suburbs of Chicago. It's not it's super easy to get anywhere. There are, there aren't a lot of outside places to hang downtown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys do? There's a veranda experience. It's also a good idea. Uh, obviously, the answer no. is holoportation. <laughs> holoportation is clearly the answer. <laughs> oh, yes. If I was going to over-engineer a problem, this would be it. <laughs> Yeah, that that being on your mind makes sense. Like as conference season starts and DigitalOcean is going to conferences in person again. Um, also, if you guys want to meet us anywhere, go at us on Twitter and tell us what at specifically at the, at the conferences we're going to, not just like show up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's also tricky because Open Source Summit is in Austin, Texas in June, and I'm assuming it'll be hot, <laughs> um, like oh, temperature-wise. Yeah, because right. so. <laughs> it's in Texas. Yeah. Someone tell me what Texas is like. <laughs> I think it's I think it's hot at the end of <laughs> June. <laughs> is what I've been told. So. Yeah, awesome. I, I, everything I've seen is hot and quite often quite humid. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, we'll figure it out. Uh, well, uh, similar to Amy, what I have on my mind is like uh, things I need to prepare for conferences. So KubeCon EU, I'm giving a workshop. Uh, Open Source Summit, I'm giving a workshop. And, uh, you know, workshopping those workshops um, is what's on my mind is, you know, finding the sort of like uninterrupted time to be able to work on that content is always is always hard and the, oh i gotta write something the deadline That's is right. approaching <laughs> so um yeah all right well ooh, upcoming events i think is next um me do we have any do we have any <laughs> i i live stream every tuesday at 3 p.m eastern time so uh if you want to hang out and watch me muck around in a Kubernetes cluster, <laughs> please join me. It's fun. I usually spin up a cluster. And if I'm like, I've been working on talks the past two weeks. So I was just preparing for those talks and like exploring the technology I was using. And then when I don't have a deadline like that, I usually pick a CNCF project that I've heard about, but have never used firsthand. So then install that and sort of just do the proof of concept thing. And 
Uh, it's pretty casual, uh, but I have a good time. Um, and then it looks like uh, we do have a tech talk next week on May 4th. Otto, our new director of DevRel at DigitalOcean, is giving a talk on how to create apps with MongoDB. And M Otto used to work at MongoDB, so I think he's a real expert. And apparently, the talk is Star Wars themed. <laughs> of course, it is. Uh <laughs> Uh, so, um, I see that oh, as yeah. I snuck in three Star Trek <laughs> references during the course of this <laughs> stream. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then two Army captains watching my Tuesday uh, stream. Yeah. Uh, I gave a talk on it yesterday, which is slightly more organized than my live stream. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see how to install Prometheus and like what you could do with it. Um, Oh, Toon Army Captain and Bleeb. Okay, it's on uh, May 4th, um, the the talk. <laughs> the, you know, May 4th be with you. <laughs> um, all right. Well, does anyone have a joke? <laughs> did it's I... one in the dock. I don't know who put it there. <laughs> I bet Otto did. It was me? It was me. <laughs> Do you want to all read right. It? Well, Amy... You are responsible for this the joke. joke though. I don't know where it is. Do you want me to copy paste your joke into private chat? Could you? Yeah. <laughs> then I'll just read. You're going to ruin it for us. But... Uh... There you go. Okay. Th thank you. Two bites me. The first bite asks, are you ill? And the second bite replies, no, just feeling a bit off. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's a good one. There we go. <laughs> Joke of the day, tick. Uh, well, <laughs> thank you all so much for hanging out with us. Uh, you know, uh, talking through all the news and uh, watching us uh, figure out some technical issues together. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll be back next week. So uh, when it's yeah. the month of May. <laughs> same bad time, same no. bad channel, same bad show. Just a different <laughs> month. That's it's right. going to be me. <laughs> it can't be. I refuse. There you go. All right. Well, take care, everyone. We'll see you soon. See you.